the second Sunday of Easter here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church of Wathena, Kansas, as it is all around the world. And we worship today using Lutheran Service Book, Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. And we start with the singing of hymn number 470, verses 1 through 5. O sons and daughters of the King, 470, verses 1 through 5. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting 
life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all of our sin. To those who believe in His name, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We continue speaking responsibly by half first the words of the intro, which are printed in your worship bulletin for this morning. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Glory in his holy name. Seek the Lord and his strength. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. He remembers his covenant forever. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. seated for the 
the scripture reading. The first lesson from God's Word for this second Sunday of Easter is taken from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 20. It serves as the first of two texts for our sermon meditation this morning. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The second lesson from God's word is taken from the letter to of John to Revelation chapter 1 verses 4 through 18. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos, on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire, 
His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel, the second of two texts for the sermon, this morning's sermon meditation is taken from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. <laughs> On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Continue confessing the faith God gave us in baptism using the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 192. Page 192. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue singing the hymn in 470, verses 6 through 9. 470. stand as you are able. God's grace and his mercy and his peace be multiplied to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is the, the first lesson from Acts chapter 5 and the gospel lesson from John chapter 20. Please be seated. We post signs to draw attention to something. If there is a if there is no stop sign, if there is none of those yellow with black lettering signs along the road, do you pay attention? Or do you go on doing whatever it was that you were doing, continuing as you are? The radio, your cell phone, the lady speaking on your cell phone, telling you turn here, curve here, and so forth. What are you focused on? What about when you're going somewhere that you have never been? There is a lot of traffic. And what that lady on your cell phone, the GPS lady, is telling you, and what the road signs that you can see don't match up. They're confusing. They seem contradictory. What about then? Well, that's what you may wonder about. You may tr not trust as being reliable the messages of all the signs that you see, including those verbal signs from that lady talking to you on your device. That's when you may wish for an automatic, slow motion, descrambler override in your onboard computer 
to process all that information overload that you're receiving from all around you and to give you a trustworthy direction to take. Christ Jesus knows the importance of signs for you and me. He knows the direction of focus on reality that signs give to you and to me is vital. It's vital to you and to me. Jesus knows that you and I instinctively pay attention only to what's at the tip of our noses in this brief earthly life. Only what's right in front of us. Staying between the yellow and the white lines, a car's length ahead of you in front of your front bumper, that's always, always more important to you than that barricade warning you of a washed out road or bridge a mile down the road. The lines right now, right here, is always more important than that out there in your future. That's how we think, right? We think in the immediate, the present. That's why Jesus gave signs to his original small group of disciples in today's gospel reading from God's word. And then he also gave signs to his ever larger group of disciples in today's reading from Acts chapter 5. In giving those early disciples those signs, Jesus is giving those exact same signs to you and to me right this very moment in faith, in all places, all circumstances that we find ourselves. In other words, Christ Jesus crucified and arisen lovingly has signs focus you and me on his one sign where he does not just focus us on reality right in front of us, all around us, but where he actually created our real reality. Jesus focuses you and me on himself. He focuses us on him hanging all blood-soaked on Good Friday's cross, which is his mother of all signs. His cross is all the sign, the only sign that you and I need. That's because his cross does not warn us of a danger. Instead, it shows us that Jesus has destroyed all danger and destruction and death that would have been ours if we had continued to focus on our immediate sinful selves and the tyranny of the immediate this world insists that we focus upon. He has us look out into the future and see the real certain future that he has created for and in you and me. Hiding away in that secret upper room in today's gospel narrative was a clear sign that Jesus' closest disciples gave to Jesus and the world that they were afraid of the world. They were afraid of dying physically at the hands of the very same people whom Jesus had let kill him not that many days beforehand. Jesus' cross was Jesus' platform of victory, of eternal life over physical death. They thought, the world thought, 
that Jesus Christ was his platform of shame, defeat, failure, and destruction. When in actuality, it was his platform of substitutionary satisfaction before God the Father. But Jesus' disciples didn't see it that way, did they? They were just like the rest of the world around them. They saw it only as defeat, failure, abject shame, and scandal. In other words, Jesus Christ's cross was a sign of shame to them. It was and is to this sinful and dying world and its hostile unbelief a sign of shame, defeat, failure, laughability. Well, Jesus had lovingly given his closest disciples many signs of his victory of eternal life in those past three years that they had lived with each other 24-7, 365. But now, just as lovingly, Jesus knew that they needed more signs, yet some more signs to spotlight his real, true, creative sign of his cross that he willingly and intentionally had gone to and died on, and then also his empty tomb, that he willingly and intentionally had risen from. Well, he knew then also that this larger group of disciples that are mentioned in Acts chapter 5 also needed his miraculous signs, not just of proof, but of assurance. Assurance that everything promised by him had been completed perfectly by him. He had willingly, intentionally, and victoriously died. He had risen from the grave exactly as he said he would. Those miraculous signs all pointed directly to the word become flesh the word who lived among us. Those miraculous signs all pointed directly to that word dying for us to free us from our slavery to sin, death, and hell. And then also arising from his grave in incontrovertible proof that he had done everything that he had promised and prophesied. Those miraculous signs all pointed directly to the incontrovertible fact that Jesus' life and his death was perfectly satisfying to God the Father's righteous demand for perfection. This was proved by the fact that God the Father joyfully tore the temple, tore the curtain in the temple of Jerusalem from top to bottom, the very moment that Jesus willfully and intentionally died on his cross. And this, therefore, was proof that Jesus had opened heaven's gates to all believers. That is, all who trust only in Jesus Christ as their only Savior from all of their damning and deadly sin against God. When you have been where you have been before, which is most of our life, most of the time that we're out and about, you may not need signs to direct you because you have seen many signs that warn you of what you need to be warned of. That is the past dictating your present. But what of your future? What of that barricade a mile down the road that is warning you of a road or a bridge that has been washed out, which you cannot see at the present, in your present, 
but you will see it in your future. Is your future any less real than your present? Christ Jesus, in his word, including in today's two sermon texts, when he lovingly speaks himself into his disciples of all ages, including you and me today, says, No! No! Your future is just as real as your present. Your future a mile down the road which you cannot see is just as real as your present this very moment which you can see. Even more so is your true home in this heaven which Jesus has made for you and for me in faith that he has created in you and me by the power of his eternal life creating word that he lovingly, willfully, and intentionally speaks into you and me once again in today's gospel text. Jesus Christ's creative speech of life was breathed into you by Jesus, when Jesus says unto you in verse 19, Peace be with you. Jesus speaks himself into you once again in verse 21, when he says once again, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus crucified is the one true, trustworthy, fear-destroying, eternal life-creating peace of God the Father. Lovingly, willfully, intentionally declared into you and me by the power of Christ Jesus' word, which God the Holy Spirit miraculously breathes into you and to me in Jesus' word and sacraments. Once upon a time, the exact same God the Father lovingly, willfully, intentionally breathed out life into the chaos of this not yet world and he creatively said, let there be. He did so on six consecutive days. On the sixth day, God's crowning breath of creation came when he lovingly created mankind. We read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. That was God the Father breathing his life-creating peace of eternal life with him in his perfect presence. It was. And when mankind's original parents broke and destroyed that peace living in them with their rebellious disobedience against God the Father, that's when the God the Son immediately came to them to breathe his eternal life restoring breath into them. He then also told all of their descendants, including you and me, that he would recreate eternal life in them by recreating his peace between God the Father and mankind by crushing the head of death and the devil and all of mankind's damning sin. This promise was a sign of God the Lord, the good Lord, 
It was a sign of his undying love for you and for me, for all mankind. It was a sign of his creation. As time went by, God gave us more signs. More signs. More signs to help keep us between the yellow and the white lines of the immediate present. Like, for instance, the Ten Commandments. You can't stay between the lines. And your life is one driving accident after another. But nonetheless, your salvation is coming up ahead in your future that you cannot see. Later on in the wilderness of this sinful world, God the Son had a preview of his cross lifted up with a snake's image on it for everyone dying from the snake bite of their damned old sin against God so that they could look at it in faith and be healed. You heard the story. You know it. They lived. And as disgusting and scandalous an image as that was for those people to look at a snake up on a cross, well, so also is the disgusting and scandalous reality of Christ Jesus' bloody body on his cross of Mount Calvary. Jesus on his cross not only heals us of our sin in the faith that he spoke into us there where, when he lovingly, willfully, and intentionally said to each and every single one of us, it is finished, but it also creates brand new eternal life in you and me. It does. It creates the eternal life in us by the sin-destroying and life-creating power of his word. Peace be with you. And receive the Holy Spirit. In his sacrament of holy baptism, God the Holy Spirit spoke. He breathed the peace of heaven. The peace that we rebelled against and still rebel against in our sinful disobedience, that is, Jesus Christ crucified into us. He breathed Jesus into you and me. He breathes him into us in the proclamation of his life-creating word. Right now. He breathes him into us in his word he speaks into us. This is my body. This is my blood. And so, in the faith breathed into us, we receive the reality, the reality of our past, our present, and our future, eternal future. Christ Jesus crucified. He is our all, He is our everything our past, our present, our future. The peace of God that passes all human understanding. He lovingly, willfully, intentionally breathes into us in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in, in him we might become the righteousness of God. God. Sinless Jesus Christ became God's peace between God the Father and you and me on his cross of satisfactory sacrifice. His cross and his long promised and everlasting sign for all people of all times and all places. God has recreated his peace with mankind. So there's your sign. There's your sign. There is your real peace sign 
for all of your moments and days and nights. It's not this. It's this. Please feel free to joyfully make this creative sign of eternal life in Christ Jesus crucified marked upon your forehead and upon your heart when Je where Jesus has lovingly marked you as one of his redeemed children in faith by the power of his sin-destroying and life-creating word that he lovingly, willfully, intentionally breathes into you. Praise God from whom all blessings of his sin-destroying and eternal life-creating breathing flow into you now and always in his word and in his two sacraments. Amen. Please stand as you are able for prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who gave us your sure and certain sign of your holy and blessed cross of victory, not of scandal, of salvation. We praise and thank you for this, your greatest sign that we bear with us in our hearts and minds at all times of day and night. And we thank you for your loving blessing of giving us this in all times of need and want. And we pray that you grant this to the family and friends of Russell Dwyer, the family and friends of Mary Bell Gall, Sarah Bay Sarah, Jim Sarah, Drew Elrod, Eric Stark, Edna Rader, Agnes Keenoff, Nakia Weber, Heidi Dwyer, Judy Fumler, Preston McGoy, Roger Altavote, Maureen Michael, Richard Blanton, Gavin Euler, Emily Keenoff, Gary Payton, Ken Rader, Vanessa Seward, Kinley Weber, Reverend Robert M. Ziegler, Pam Reeser, Dixie Payton, John Keenoff, Mike Nelson, Liz Barr, Anna Nimps, Carolyn Piker. Be with them in all needs of body, soul, and spirit, and according to your good and gracious will, grant them what they need according to your loving grace and mercy, now and always, as you are faithful to do with all of us, 
according to your good and gracious will. We pray this in the uh, words that our Father has given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. closing hymn in 487 come you thank come you faithful raise the string 487 
Okay, well, um, Easter has come and gone, but uh, there's still a lot going on. Uh, we have several things today at, uh, let's see, 4 to 6 this afternoon, evening, the youth group, Christ Lutheran Youth Group, will be working at Caden's Closet in Troy, uh, sorting and at 6 o'clock here at church. Uh, the youth group will be enjoying an escape room slash scavenger hunt here at the church. And there will be some form of food uh, associated with that. Pizza. Pizza. Okay. Okay. Hard to say no to food, isn't it? Okay. So, uh, that's going on in... Um, Let's see here, uh, the, uh, we're almost at May, a week from today is May 1st, uh, first Sunday of May, uh, there's five Sundays in May, and uh, <clears throat> please uh, pick up a May calendar, if you haven't already, they're in the narthex, if you're going to see somebody who's not here right now, take one for them. Give it to him this week. Uh, so, uh, please do that. Uh, do you have any updates, anything we need to know? Uh, Wednesday is Bible study. Wednesday when? is Women's Bible study. Six. Women's Bible study. Okay. All right, well, I overlooked that. Sorry. Uh, this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock is... Women's Bible study here at church. Okay, anything as far as here at church that may need to be, be good for everybody to know? Um, for the youth group tonight, we do have some private shirts. If they would like to take them and wear them to the game closet or to the sick room tonight, they can have them back to church. Um, okay, shirts. Another thing we've become very used to having today uh, t shirts. Okay, so uh, see Emily and Melissa for those uh, if you'd like to do so. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you. God bless. As he always is faithful to do in his word and sacrament. See you next Sunday. Lord willing.